Joining us right now is former UK IP leader, Nigel Farage. Nigel, thanks so much for weighing in this morning. Thank you. Your reaction to the election Thank results you. first. Well, I think Mrs. May makes a mess of it. I mean, she had a parliamentary majority. We triggered Article 50. The negotiations with the European Union are due to start in 11 days' time. And the next election was not due until 2020. She forced this fresh election upon the country, and she's failed. And while she's just about crept back with the support of some Northern Irish Unionists, I think her credibility is completely and fatally damaged, not just here, but in the eyes of the European Union too. Nigel, one of the reasons that Brexit seemed to make so much sense is because the UK economy was so much freer and stronger than the EU it was leaving. But doesn't this election result inevitably mean that economic policy in the UK moves, moves left? Whether or not it's a conservative or a labor-led minority government, this looks like undermining the kind of economic argument that made Brexit such a, a potentially beneficial move. Yes, I think I agree with that. And, and I, I have to say, I mean, there were no obstacles in our course at all. Whilst her majority wasn't big, it was big enough. Uh, and she's risked everything just to give herself, you know, an increased majority, uh, and it really has come undone. We yeah, Nigel, still Nigel can, you, can you expand on that? Sorry, it's Kevin. Yeah. Uh, so why exactly did she do this? Because you, you just laid out the case, and I, I've been confused this whole time, yeah. why she would, uh, after, even after invoking Article 50, why would she call for the snap election? I can't find the justification, so maybe you can help shed some light on that. Yes, I can. At one point, they were 24 points ahead of the Labour Party in the polls. Jeremy Corbyn, the hard left leader of Labour, was doing very badly. Uh, and I think f for sort of hubristic reasons, she thought this was a moment of very great victory. And, you know, when you call unnecessary elections, often the voters don't like that very much. So whilst we will still head towards Brexit, my fear now, uh, you know, as a leading Brexiteer, is we will start to water down and soften the economic package which will keep us you know quite closely trapped inside a model that is not good for our global economy. Nigel, it's Dagan McDowell. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, clearly based on the numbers, uh, the Labour Party leader will not be the prime minister of the country. But this man, if Americans don't understand how left lean, he doesn't even lean oh. left. As someone said earlier, well, he's left of Bernie Sanders. His, his approach, his policies, uh, do, should people fear a, a kind of uh, left-leaning um, policy, particularly economic policy in Britain? Well, if the election had gone about 10 seats the other way, we'd be facing the prospect of Prime Minister Corbyn. He's basically a Marxist. Um, he's cozied up over the years to Hamas, who he called his friends, his buller, uh, the IRA, and he absolutely loathes the United States of America. Him becoming Prime Minister would have been a disaster for relations between our two countries in terms of security, defence and trade. So thank goodness it didn't happen. But boy, he got close. But Nigel, that's what's so perplexing in a way, because it seems like Theresa May and the Conservatives okay. were hurt by the recent terror attacks. And Britons feel that they're not being protected, particularly after she was home, um, uh, as home secretary for six years. So yes. they essentially lean towards somebody who is in, who, you know, is in bed, if you will, with terrorist organizations. Well, do, you, do you know something? I think we can analyze this result too much in terms of policy. I think in the end what it came down to was personality. Mrs. May was very wooden, very robotic, looked totally insincere, refused, can you believe, to do a head-to-head -head television debate and hid away from the public. Jeremy Corbyn, if I take the politics out of it, which mm -hmm. I can't stand, Jeremy Corbyn toured around the country looking about 30 years younger than his age. There was energy, there was activism. Like Trump, he held big rallies where big crowds of people turned up. He gave an anti-establishment message and he looked comfortable in his own skin. And I think really the story of the last few weeks, it's not about Brexit, 
It's not about the appalling terrorist attacks. It's actually about the characters and the personalities that came through in the campaign. And on that contest, Corbyn won. And what he got is a lot of young voters who don't normally vote looked upon him being like a rather friendly old uncle and turned out in their droves to vote for him. Yeah, somebody just tweeted out, Maria, the UK has just elected Bernie Sanders. Uh, as their head, uh, uh, God help them. Some, somebody just tweeted that out. But, but Kevin, you asked an important question just a moment ago. If not Theresa May, who will be the Prime Minister of the UK? Yeah, yeah. So, Nigel, I'm, I'm curious about who you think is going to, if, if Prime Minister May has to step aside, who can fill in that void? I okay. mean, during the original uh, Brexit talks, people were looking to Boris, even though he wasn't part of the government at the time um, in, in the normal succession. Yeah, look, I mean, Mrs. May will be at the palace to see the Queen in 15 minutes' time, as per our constitutional requirements. Uh, and uh, she, I think, to form a government, to form a coalition government, she has to go there as the sitting Prime Minister. So constitutionally, uh, she wasn't going to resign this morning. Uh, but I think she will not be there for very long at all. Uh, who will it be? Uh, my guess is the two front runners would be. Boris Johnson or David Davis, uh, both of whom were on the Brexit side. You see, the mystery, yeah. and I know, I know Fox viewers could never get this over the course of the last year, the mystery was Mrs May voted Remain. Mrs May was for staying in the European Union and yet became leader of a Brexit party. Oh. She went into this election lacking sincerity because she did not believe the words that she was speaking. And, and the voters and the Tory party that. now must, must, must get a Brexiteer to lead it. Yeah, obviously the voters saw through that, Nigel. Go ahead, Brian Brenner. Nigel, you're, yeah, you're saying that this was a personality-driven result where young people looked at a Marxist and viewed him as a kindly old grandpa. That, to me, does not bode well for the future of the UK. Should we be looking at this as a canary in the coal mine kind of election? I am slightly worried about it, but really, what Corbyn said, at the moment, if you go to university, in the United Kingdom, you have to pay fees of 9,000 sterling a year. That's what the individual student has to pay. And over the three-year period, they get racked up into debt, which you then pay back when you start off in work. What Corbyn said is, I will abolish all tuition fees for students. He was promising free money to young people. And mm. you know what they said? Thank you very much. Wow. Nigel, great analysis as always. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Nigel Farage there in London this morning.